Satisfy demands, reduce costs, improve efficiencies, or all of the above? For the, for the Gigafactory? Yes. Uh -huh. um, so the, the you know, the, the Gigafactory is like the least bad solution we could come up with, honestly. Um, uh, I mean, I think it's actually pretty cool the way it's worked out, uh, but we're just faced with a simple problem of if we want to make electric cars, we need enough batteries for the electric cars. Um, and, and so, well, last year, all lithium-ion production combined was 30 gigawatt hours, approximately. Um, that's nothing, okay? Uh, or at least, it's nothing when you consider, like, if you want to make half a million electric cars a year, that's how much you need. Um, and there are 100 million new cars made every year. There are 2 billion uh, gasoline or diesel cars on the road worldwide. Um, so just do the basic math. You don't just need one gigafactory, you need uh, like 200 gigafactories just for new car production. And that assumes you're only going to replace the fleet at the existing rate, uh, which has it um, refreshed every 20 years. Um, so uh, yeah, so, so the, given that we want to try to get to full capacity at our Fremont plant in California of half a million vehicles a year, uh, we need half a million vehicles a year of batteries. Um, and obviously we can't use all of the other factories in the world combined because people want cell phones and laptops and other things. <laughs> so <laughs> therefore, we have to build this factory. And then we found we have a great partner in Panasonic. Um, you know, Panasonic's taking care of the kind of the cell formation right. part of it. Th there are actually many aspects to this because You've got sort of anode, cathode, separator, electrolyte can um, at the precursor level. Um, you've got sort of raw materials coming in from the mines uh, that, that sort of feed into uh, a variety of other companies um, uh, like you know, Sumitomo, Sumitomo Metals and Mining and Itachi and, and others. And they do the precursor processing. And then uh, Panasonic takes the anode and cathode material, separator and whatnot, does create, puts that into a cell. Then it goes into a Tesla section, which uh, creates the module, which is all the electronics and the uh, packaging and the conductors, um, the safety mechanisms and the cooling loops. Then the modules go into the pack, which then uh, you know, create, has a lot of crash structure associated with it, and the pack goes in the car. And then, and then uh, obviously, Tesla is kind of the, um, uh, the landlord of the whole thing as well. Um, anyway, that's like, yeah. uh, short of doing that, there was no, no way to scale, so that's why we did it. The reason why I brought that up is because as much as we love Teslas, we are in an aerospace department where we are really interested in the potential for electric aircraft. Sure. And I, love, I love the idea of electric aircraft. <laughs> we, everything will go electric, full, everything will go we, fully electric except for rockets. We, <laughs> we think, ironic. We think that in terms of energy density to make uh, uh, transport aircraft feasible, you would need improvements in, in, of the order of 10 to 100. What? No, that's not okay. Wait, when you say 10 to 100, of what baseline? What, what do you mean? A current ion lithium. Oh, lithium. no, no, definitely not. Uh, I, so, so I, in my opinion, at least, the, you know, where we are right now is at roughly, you know, for a, a cell that doesn't have, like, lots of other drawbacks, uh, which people always forget to mention when they talk about uh, battery breakthroughs, um, you know, there's many parameters that are important for a battery. Um, and they'll, you know, hardly a week goes by where there's not some huge breakthrough, allegedly, in batteries. But, like, the, the bullshit factor is outrageous. Um, so, but for, for real cells that actually work and don't have, like, some huge drawback, um, they're, they're currently at about 300 watt-hours per kilogram. Um, and if you, you you're, to, to have a compelling aircraft, you only really need about 400 watt-hours per kilogram, provided you're... The, your, the percentage of cell on the craft, on the, on the aircraft, is high. It doesn't need to be anywhere near as high as the, it is on a rocket. Um, but if it's sort of at the 70% level um, at 400 watt hours per kilogram, um, you can do very decent range. Um, and if you sort of move it up to the sort of mid, mid to high 70s, you can go transcontinental. But with, you know, not, not intercontinental, but sort of, sort of west coast to east coast. Um, so you need, need an efficient aircraft, uh, but, but that's, that's approximately, by my calculations, 
the, the numbers you need, 400 watt ounce per kilogram, mid to high 70s cell mass fraction, um, which I think is an achievable number. Because um, like, aircraft have all these like unnecessary things like tails and like rudders and elevators. <laughs> it's like it's not needed. <laughs> <laughs> that, just, just, that, just gimbal, you know, it, it, anyway, you, g gimbal, gimbal the electric fan. Like for some weird reason, like gimbling motors is normal in rockets and not in aircraft. Like, well, why not? <laughs> okay, well, it definitely plans to get into this business because we love to, to see the, how, how things develop in that particular area. Certainly a very interesting domain. Do you have a specific plans? Um, I mean, I've been sort of toying with the design for an electric supersonic vertical takeoff and landing electric aircraft for a while. Um, I'd, I'd love to do it, um, but I think my mind would explode. <laughs> uh, it's like brains worn out, you know. It's like sa pretty saturated working on electric cars and, and rockets. Um, so. Okay, okay.